Good morning, Sun City. Thank you, thank you. We'll be here all week. Do we have any first timers here? Raise your hands. Terrific. Now, you want to come up and see John Sterling up here or Howie in the back for membership? Let me see, John, that's an inside joke. John really doesn't want more members because we're short on techs in house to support more members, but we'll talk about that later. If you would, please silence your phones. Agenda doesn't change much from month to month, so we won't even talk about it. The, the treasurer's report doesn't change month to month either. Uh, the important number is the one at the bottom. Through two months, we've contributed $145 to Grafton Food Pantry. Thank you for that. And that's from the donuts and coffee. Uh, for the record, last year, we our donations exceeded $1,000 for the fifth or sixth year in a row. <laughs> Membership, and this is why John's not anxious for more members. We're sitting at 1527. Uh, in case you didn't know, the computer club is the largest charter club in Sun City. And we want to get bigger and grow. Not all of us. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Uh, Computer Club Matters schedule for this year, next month, on the 13th of April. Uh, the feature presentation will be Computer Scams and Microsoft Defender. And everyone that's running Windows on their micro on their laptop, particularly if it's Windows 10 or 11, you already have a pretty good virus and malware protection on your device called Microsoft Defender. And Shelly's going to have a presentation to help you learn more about it and how to use it. Again, coffee and donuts at 9. The meeting starting at 9.30. Computer lab hours continue to be Monday and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to noon. Remember your username and passwords when you come to the lab. The Apple group, I'm sorry, the photography group, meets the first Wednesday of the month in the evening, and the Apple group the first Tuesday of the month in the morning. Now, how many of you have had a smartphone for six months or more? Okay. How many have had one for a year or more? Pretty good. Now, how many of you think you know a lot about your phones? <laughs> well, hold your hands up. We want to get a picture here so we can get face ID later. Now, if you're in the last group, seriously, if you are in the last group, uh, then we know you know a lot about smartphones, and we know that you can help others in the lab, help those that are less fortunate. Now, I guarantee that if you had a smartphone for a year or more, you're qualified to be a smartphone tech at the lab. Today, more questions come in about smartphones than computers. Typically, the question is, how do I do something? And if you've been using a phone for a year, you know the answers. You want to learn more about being a smartphone tech? Come on up after the meeting or come to the lab uh, after the meeting or next week and talk with John or Shelley or Ken or myself. And we'll explain more of what's involved with being a tech at the lab. We teach that too. And it's time for a commercial message. My two-year term ends June the 30th, and we need a replacement. Now, people wonder, well, how much time does it take to run the club? And my experience is about five hours a month, and most of that time is in meetings. 
As far as tech knowledge, well, I, I've been told that since I don't do Windows, that my tech knowledge is tech knowledge is deficient. Now, how many former managers, coaches, teachers, school principals, military leaders do we have in the audience? <laughs> you're, you're all qualified for the role, so please come on up, and we'll talk more about taking over the club in a couple of months. <laughs> Now, don't be worried. We have a very experienced board that will help you out, and they really do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. <clears throat> you like the red? Now, if you've ever been on the, on the board of any organization or in the executive suite, you know that the, the most important job is to guarantee the survival of the organization. Now, we're fortunate our club survives because of our members and because we consistently provide useful information and solid one-on-one -on -one support in the lab. Our free classes address all levels of a user's expertise and experience. <clears throat> I'm writing as fast as I can. <clears throat> Now, admittedly, in this case, youth is a relative term. <laughs> yeah, admittedly, the, the board's average age today is north of 80. Now, for background here, and the reason we know this is because many of the current board members used computers before there was a Microsoft. In fact, some of us are guilty of owning Apple computers before there was a Macintosh. <clears throat> so not, not to talk age discrimination here, but we're looking for our youth, new youth, to come in at age of, say, 75 or younger. <laughs> now, even if you're just curious about what's involved in being, in being a board member or being the president, we ask you to talk with any of our current board members, and I'm going to ask them all to stand so you can see them and identify them. Please. Howie, you can stand in the back over there. Uh, we have Howie, we have Teresa, we have John, and Shelley, and Bill, and Ralph, and Ken, and Frank, and Dave. Thank you guys and gals for all your help. And that's the end of the commercial and return to our regular programming in progress. <clears throat> Speaking of classes, no registration required, no tickets to purchase, just show up, bring your username and your password. For this month, we still have two classes coming up, both smartphone with the uh, introduction to iPhone next week and Android the week after. Now, to, so you know we're not slacking off. We already have eight classes booked for April, ranging from uh, organizing your computer, introduction to eBay, Windows 11, Google Photos, iPhone and Android, and the ever popular cutting the cord. These will all be published in the newsletter at the first of the month, and uh, I believe we're going to be able to get them into lifestyles. Community Matters, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, important for those of you that are your gamblers, bingo on the 17th. Sun City Board Meeting, the 22nd. Consumer Showcase, the 23rd. Uh, make your reservations for gardening on the, by the 31st. 
And the theater production of 9 to 5 is at the end of April. And if you want to know more about tickets, Linda Davis is up here. Raise your hand, Linda. And she'll help you out on tickets. And I know they're going to be on sale next month. April 4th, important day. Get out and vote. To my knowledge, the voting will be here. And uh, I believe McHenry County will be up at the... Uh, Thank you, the Towson Center in the, in the village, in the city. This is from a store in the mall. <laughs> Favorite ad. This is one that the wife and I used a lot pre-COVID called Spot Hero. This is an app where you can prepay your parking Print out the QR code, and that's your, your basically your ticket in and out of the garage. So, and it's a free app on Apple and the Google Play. What does it do? You go in and you you enter in the address you want to go. In this case, I picked the Auditorium Theater. The red circle is my addition. The theater is where the pin drop is there, and it gives you a list of all the parking for the time frame I picked here. Uh, 5.30 to 11.30 p.m. And I can get close for $15. And it works not only here, but let's say you've been invited to the Kennedy Center Honors. So you go to D.C. And there's the Kennedy Center. And for $10 for the period, you can park nearby. This works everywhere that I, I've been and used it. In addition, it's being incorporated into Apple Maps and Google Maps. So when you select a location in either one of those, there's a little icon of the uh, app itself that shows up in the information, and you can click on that and get the knowledge about the price and location of local parking. And my player to introduce Ken Chawinski with our feature app, Home Automation. Give us a minute as we change technology. start. And David had a couple of questions for you. I have a couple as well. Uh, how many people have any kind of like, like a Wi-Fi light bulb? Okay, just a few. Um, how many have something like Amazon uh, Echo or Google or any of those person assistant and uh, voice assistants? Okay, so uh, using them together. Wi-Fi light bulb can turn light on and off and say, uh, Alexa to turn it on and off. No, okay, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about all, all that. Uh, automated lighting provides convenience and security, comforting to never come home. That's that's what I enjoy about this most. You, you know, you come home and there's no lights on, and if you have some kind of automation, even a simple Wi-Fi light bulb, you can schedule it and have it come on at dusk. And you're walking into a house where there's at least a little bit of light. Now, when I first moved here in 2003, there was no light. Um, people didn't have their outside lights on. There was no businesses without all lit up. And at night, it was dark. Um, <clears throat> you can save a lot of time and energy by automating everyday tasks. Using smart devices that can do some daily functions, such as starting the morning coffee. I used that when my wife was still working. And, I pick up my I set it up the night before, a little four cup drip maker, and a button next to the bed. Wake up in the morning, just bump, push the button, and by the time I got dressed and got to the kitchen, the coffee was ready. It was really nice. Um, before, oh, yeah, opening and closing the blinds, uh, I'll probably talk about that later, or cleaning the floors when no one is home. Home automation systems, you know, they have these robot vacuums now. Home automation systems, can tell when your phone is home or when it's away. And you know, both people 
in the house or one front one in the barber, um, when there's nobody home, and they say, okay, it'll start automatically vacuuming the floors. So it's not, you're, you're, not, you're not in the way. I have, I have a little echo here, and it just makes some noises. Um, some devices even have a, a vacation mode. Some of the Wi-Fi uh, light bulbs and some of the automation systems uh, have a vacation mode that will vary the, turning the lights on and off during the times so that it looks like someone's really home. Instead of a you know, 5 o'clock, boom, all the lights go on. Boom, 10 o'clock, all the lights go off. This will vary them so that um, it's, it's more realistic. Um, just a little bit of history. Uh, home automation seems like it's really new stuff. Well, in 1975, uh, some engineers at, at, in, in uh, Scotland created X10, which is something that I used. I started using it in '85. Um, it was it was a good system. It sent commands through the house wiring, which had some problems, but uh, they started very basic, and then they, they exploded. You could buy this stuff really cheap. You could get like three wall switches for twenty dollars. Uh, very inexpensive. Uh, then in 85, they developed a little box that you could run a program on your computer and program all the different devices and then download it into this box and then turn it turn off the computer and this, this box would send the commands out at the proper times. And it was really, I, I consider it the beginnings of our home automation. Uh, I didn't use X10 when we moved to Sun City, but then I wanted something better and I, I discovered <laughs> Instagram, which was uh, a more reliable system, uh, but it required uh, a hub, which is a device that all the devices in the house connect to this hub, and this hub would connect to a server somewhere. And, um, and that was that worked really nice until one day all my devices stopped working. Uh, and I didn't know why, so I was walking around turning lights on and off by hand. Why? <laughs> so, <laughs> So after about a week, I found on the internet that said, yeah, the company went out of business, they shut down their servers, they're done. Oh, well, then I went on and bought some Wi-Fi devices and plugged those in and got everything running again, so I didn't have to manually push buttons. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so I scrambled a bit. Okay, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm running something called Home Assistant. It runs on a Raspberry Pi computer. Um, you spelled Pi wrong. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. That's 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 what that, that's. This is a Raspberry Pi computer. <coughs> it's it's a full computer. I mean, you you can you can plug in you can plug in a, a monitor, a keyboard, and mouse, and you can go on the internet. You can do everything you want to do with this. Um, not as fast as some other computers, but. Um, but I have, I, this isn't the one that's my home assistant, but mine is still running the house at home. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a full blown computer and it's, it's running the house and doing a nice job. Uh, and I've got a lot of devices at home. Um, so, more about that. Now, for those people who don't have any of them, if you want to get started in, in something, if, you, if you'd like to come home and have a light on, but you don't want to leave the light on all day. That, that was when we first moved here. We were going on day trips, especially in the winter time, and he turned on light in the morning, lights in the morning, so that when you came home, there was lights on. Kind of looked like somebody was home, but well, that was pretty obvious that the lights on at noon on a sunny day. There's probably nobody home. So uh, I, I started with the automation, and then have the lights come on at dusk, and that's the nice thing over these little timers that you set is a lot of these devices you can set to go on at dusk or dusk plus 10 minutes or dusk plus mi uh, minus 10 minutes so that you can vary it. This one come on at dusk, this one come on at dusk minus 5 minutes, this one come on at dusk plus 15 minutes. So things come on at different times and it looks like somebody's home. Um, so I, I started putting this stuff in and it, uh, it really made it more livable. And I'm just used to lights being on. <clears throat> I, I, don't, I walk around the house and lights just, I have motion sensors and things, and lights just go on and off when, when, when they need to. 
Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so getting started small. Now, I did look, and at Walmart, they have these smart Wi-Fi bones and these Roku, Roku switches. They have a lot of other things, too. I didn't, I didn't bring any uh, Wi-Fi light bulbs. <clears throat> now those are color light bulbs, $20 for three of them. And the one thing that you might want to watch for if you buy any of these is it says it's dimmable, which is a nice feature. Because sometimes some of the things like in the evening I might have a lamp come on in the bedroom and 50% brightness. Or if the, well, LEDs are different, I mean, it might be 30% brightness. Just to have a little bit of light in the room, so you can walk in there without tripping over things. Um, and the well, the, the plug-in switches like this are, are they're not dimmable. Um, because these well, some of them can be, but um, a lot of times you plug in things that you don't want to be dim dimmed. But some of these are dimmable. Um, this one I have is, is it has even more features. It can monitor the power consumption of whatever's plugged into this. And I can go on my phone and I can see whatever's running off of here, I can see how much power it's using. And I want to use that for something else in the house in the future. But those two, um, I looked it up, and they're available at Walmart and just they're in stock uh, on the shelf. It even shows you an aisle. I looked and I didn't see any light bulbs, but they're in aisle L12. And the Roku is in L3 or K3. Um, someplace else, probably with all the light bulbs, which didn't make any sense to me to you altogether with the water mission. But anyway, that's. But color light bulbs, I don't have any, but I can see where there might be some nice, nice features there. So, now uh, getting started, it's really easy. Oops. Um, I thought I had a slide for that. <clears throat> you pretty much get the light bulb and you, whatever lamp you want to put it in, unscrew the bulb, unscrew the new one in, turn the switch on, and then leave it alone. Don't touch that switch ever again. You have to leave that switch on. The light bulb will turn on and off internally. So you have to have the light switch on all the time so power can get to the light bulb. And then you get on your phone, download whatever app they tell you to use. And the light bulb, usually the first time you turn it on, it'll be blinking. And uh, as long as it's blinking, that's in its, its pairing mode. And then you, you get on your, on your app and you say, okay, add a device. And it says, oh, is the light blinking? Yeah. And then, okay. And then it'll find, your phone will find the light bulb, it'll connect to it. And then they'll want to know, okay, what's your Wi Fi? You use your, you know, your Wi-Fi SSID and your password, your Wi-Fi password, because after after that, your your bulb is going to know your Wi-Fi, so they can connect directly to your Wi-Fi, not to your phone. Your phone will connect to the Wi-Fi, your bulb will connect to the Wi-Fi, and that's how they'll communicate. Um, and then once once you do that, you're done. You just in in the app, you can go in and, and uh, set up a schedule. You can set up a, a, a different schedule for every day. Um, you, can, you can set up you know, Monday through Friday, you can have it one, one time going on and off. And weekend is a different time if you're still working. Uh, whatever you want. If you want every day to be in a different schedule, you can do that too. It's very easily done all on your app, on your phone. And you can just save that and it'll load it into the phone, into the, I don't know if it's loaded in the bulb or now these are Wi-Fi, so you have to monitor the network to see if that's going out anywhere to a server someplace. I'm not positive about that yet. <clears throat> but it's, it's very simple to do. Uh, I was going to, one thing I learned is you don't want to do any lab demonstrations because they usually fail. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't bring the stuff to do a demonstration here. And that could take a while. Um, so that's pretty much it for getting started. And I, I gave a couple of these light bulbs to my sons in law. Um, and one of them loved it. 
and he went crazy and he went buying more of these and plug-in uh, modules like, like this. And, uh, other, there's a lot of other things you can get as well. Now, grab store. Now, how many people besides me has left the house in a hurry in the morning and you're driving down the road and think, did I close that garage door? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I bought this. I think I found it on sale. It was like $50. Um, this was about a, over a year ago. But this works in conjunction with your, and I'm sure most of us have a left master <laughs> garage door opener unless it's been changed to something else. But, um, it's very little installation to this. It's very easy. Anybody can do it. You might have to get it on a step stool. Um, but this device goes on the inside of your, the top panel of your garage door. And it's just a P1 stick. Boom, that's on there. And you pull the little tab that connects the battery. And then this one has a power cord that you have to put it in there, an outlet somewhere, plug it in, and then you go on, again, an app on your phone, and in the app, you have to connect this device to your Wi-Fi, similar to what I talked about for the Wi-Fi light bulb. You have to tell that what your Wi-Fi name and password is, and then your phone can communicate with that through the, through the Wi-Fi so that if you're not home, uh, you can get on your phone and you can look and say, oh, yeah, I did close the garage door. Or, no, I didn't, and just, oh, and the door closes. So you can open and close the door remotely. Um, this, is, this is really, it's really nice. Now, I found that I usually did close the garage door. <laughs> but um, it's, it, it's been very, very handy. Now, when, when in, in order to install this, I say you, you stick this on the back of the door, you put this, they give you screws and things you can mount to a wall, you can mount to the ceiling, um, someplace where it's going to be visible. I, put, I just put mine on a shelf because I'm in a hurry, and someday I'll put it somewhere. Okay. Um, but uh, because this is a light in here and it makes sounds, so if you're if you get on your phone or you close the garage door, it's going to beep for, I don't know, about five seconds, and the light in the middle will flash for five seconds. Just to alert anybody in the garage or in the area that the door is going to be closing. And then, and then the door will close. <clears throat> um, so you, you want that visible someplace you don't want to bury it. But, oh, and then uh, connecting that to your existing garage door opener, it's like connecting another remote. You have to get up and push the button on your garage door opener, the programming button. Learn button. Uh, pardon me? Learn, learn button. The learn button, yeah. Some, on mine it's orange, and many of them I've seen them, it, it's been orange. But you push it. Now, don't hold it. Just boom, boom, that's it. If you hold it for a few seconds, you're going to wipe out all the programming and none of your remotes will work. <laughs> so, but once once you've got that done, it's going to work. You can push the button on your on your phone, and the door will open. Push the button, and it'll close. So it's, 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 it's been very handy. Um, oh, that did come out. That came out different. Um, yes. My cute garage door app. This is what the app looks like here. Um, and it shows that both doors are closed. It tells you how long they've been closed. Um, it's, it's nice. Uh, and then again, if you want to open that one, just click on that door. And then this one, you click on it, you click on it again, and then the door will open. So it's it kind of click on it and selects it, and then click on it and it opens. Now, this is another thing that I put in that's, again, very easy to do. And I got this in Menards. I did, the, I did install this for, for a friend, and for some reason, the motion sensor here did not work. Um, but I've installed a few of them, and it's really nice because the button is right next to the door where you walk out of the house.
across into the garage and open the door. And before my foot hits the ground, the light on the garage door opener turns on. So again, you're not walking into a dark garage. You don't have to reach around for the switch. You just open the door and the light comes on. Um, it's been another, another convenience. And I think the button, I forget what it was, maybe 20, 20, about $25 maybe. Um, so very, very inexpensive. Uh, another one of my favorites, a mailbox alarm. Uh, I've, had, I've had these for many years. I've had to repair mine a couple times because the little tilt switch in there, I don't know if the water gets in it or what, but it, so I ended up buying it. Bag of tilt switches and I just replace them. But and these two again are available at Walmart. I'm, I'm not pushing Walmart, but it's convenient. It's right here. Um, but these I think you'd have to order online. Um, but well, actually the one that I have it's like like they show here. It's two pieces. Now this piece there's a there's a wire that comes in, there's a, a power source that plugs in. And this is in the house. And this you just peel and stick on the inside of your mailbox door. It says up. That should be pointing up so that when the mailbox door opens, that goes down, it closes the tilt switch. And then this thing inside the house starts beeping and this little blue light starts flashing. So let you know the mail is here. So you're not making extra trips out to the mailbox. So no, the mail's not here yet. Especially in the winter time. Um, now, uh, that's that's very handy. Except if you're not home, and this this is one of my irritations. Um, if you're not home, you don't know that the mail came until you. And again, in the winter time, you get in the house, you take off your jacket, hang it up, take off your hat, take off your shoes. You walk into the kitchen and oh, look at the lights and the mail's here. <laughs> put the hat on, put the coat on, put the boots on, and walk out to the mailbox. And get <laughs> now, one thing that's on my list of to do things is to add something to this. Um, I, I, I've been in computers since I was. 21 years old, so um, this is a little computer, and and it's very similar to the other one I showed you, but this one's even smaller, maybe a little slower, but I don't need speed. Um, this I would attach to the back of this, and then connect it to the light, so that when the light goes on, the computer will sense that, and it'll send me a text message. That's on my list of to-do things, but. So that if I'm if I'm on my way home, oh, I get I get text all oh, the mail's here. Okay, so I can I can go in the house to find out the mail's here. So, but that's that's a little bit more than the average person's going to do. You get a question? Yeah. Can you put one in your pocket so if you fall down it tells your wife you fell? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll oh, tell us your wife to um, I, I suppose you could. But it's something about <laughs> you haven't tried that. No, I haven't, I haven't had to worry about that yet. Um, so so these, these are really convenient and easy to install. You can say the piece, one piece you just set it on the counter and plug it in. It comes with sticky stuff on the back. You just you can stick it onto a wall or a counter or something. And this one's, it's got Velcro, but it's, it's got the, you peel it off and stick it on. And it's Velcro so you can take it off and change the batteries if you need to. Um, but two different ones. Um, one on the left uh, says it'll, it'll, it'll be good, it's good for about 200 feet away from the mailbox, which should be fine for, I think, just about everybody in Sun City. And this one, I think it'll go 350 feet. So it's, it's a little bit. More distance, but I don't think we need that here in Sun City. Anyway, that's uh, I think that's all I have on, on, the, on the mailbox. But really handy devices and really easy to use. Now, 
Amazon Echo. I have I have an Amazon Echo. I have a Google Home Hub with the display and, and a few of the Google Home. Um, I forget what they call them. The little the Google ones look like this. This this is an Amazon one. Uh, but there, some people don't want them. I know my sons-in-law; they're both police. They don't want them in their house uh, because they're listening, and they're listening for the wake cord, which you can change. And if you notice, I can say Alexa, 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 and this thing doesn't wake up. You can change the wake cord. I changed this one to Ziggy. And I woke up. So just because I had that one next to the Alexa, and they were both fighting for who was going to answer me. <laughs> um, so uh, different ones, I mean, and, and the price varies. These you can pick up for $30, $40. I don't know if that's the normal price, but you can find them on sale usually. Uh, I've got a few of these. I've got one of these that's, this this one is really nice. This is their latest one. Uh, it's, it's got great sound, and it, it hears better. But I've, got, I've got ones from the original one. I don't know how many years ago that was. That was a tall, thin one. Um, this one, is it sounds better. It works better. And... I, I'm really liking this one. That one sits right on the counter between the kitchen and the dining room. And you don't have to yell for it to hear you. You can just talk in a normal tone of voice. And it's surprising how well it hears. So that's, I guess, a concern for people who are concerned about it, hearing everything you say. And then the display, that one, I don't have one of these from Amazon. I have one from Google. That's in my dining room. I, I don't use that one very often. But these are nice because you can talk to them. You can tell them to turn on lights. You can tell them to do a lot of different things. And I have a lot of other functions when I get into my home automation system, which is further on down the road. But this can be an automation system in itself. It'll discover all of your other Wi-Fi devices. And yeah, you may have to plug in or add, add on a, what they call a skill. And it's all in the app on your phone. You know, when you add a skill for um, you know, a Honeywell thermostat, and then it'll understand it can get the temperature from your Honeywell thermostat. You can get certain information. A lot of the things I'm talking about, if you buy Wi-Fi light bulbs and switches and things from different vendors, most of them have their own app. And you'll end up with I've got a half, no, no, I've probably got about 10 or 12 apps on my phone just for my automation stuff. And then the problem is, okay, what app do I use for this device? And then you go, no, nope, not that one. You open it, no, not that one. You open it, no, no. Oh, here it is. <laughs> you finally found, find the right app to control that device. Well, my, the automation system I use brings all that stuff together. But the Amazon Echo can do that as well. You just install a skill for this type of device, another skill for this type of device, another one for this type of device, and then that will find those Wi-Fi devices. And then you can just <coughs> tell, you know, Alexa, turn on the fireplace light. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's too bright. Alexa, fireplace light, 50%. Yeah. It dims it down a little bit. So that is becoming a hub for your whole automation system. And these, I, I don't know what, what the prices are for these these two, but these are, are relatively expensive. And they, they work very well. And, and sound pretty good too. But the sound is a little bit better with this. Oh, um, I also have a remote. I love remotes, except sometimes you get too many. But this is a remote just for, well, this will work with an Amazon Fire Stick, and it'll work with the uh, Echo. Uh, you, you tie it to a particular Echo, 
and you can just push a button and you don't have to save the wait for it. You just push the button and then say what you want. Uh, let's see, 14. What time is it? So, so yeah, so I didn't have to save the wait for it. Um, but this one is uh, Ziggy, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, it's set to high 37 degrees. That's good for me to talk about. <laughs> um, so, the remote is nice. Now, where I have this one, where I have this one, I said it between the dining room and the kitchen. So, when we have company over for dinner or something, we're all sitting at the dining room table. I'm usually at the far end of the dining room table, and then often have music playing. And sometimes some of the songs that come on are louder than the others, and it's annoying to conversation. So I try to have my remote handy, so I can just turn the volume down with my remote. Uh, or if I don't like that particular song, I can just press skip, and we'll skip to the next song. So there's some, some really handy uh, uses for the remote, and I think they might get around maybe forty dollars for the remote. But it's nice too because you can, in, in a dining room environment like that, you can just push the button and say something, and it'll just do it without having to yell across the room to tell it to do something. Um, I, I did. I tried to find it, but I couldn't. There was one where a couple, a guy, a young young guy had his friends sitting around the table, and they. Uh, he said, well, I, I gotta go in the other room to get something. And he, when the Amazon Echo first came out, he had the remote. He's in the other room, and there's, there's the thing you can say is Simon says. So whatever you say in here, that will repeat. So Simon says, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. So whatever you say, that will repeat. It doesn't say that Simon says, but. So he was in the other room, and now he knows that his buddies what they're wearing and everything. So he's he's making comments about what they're wearing, and they're like looking at this Amazon Echo. Like, like I say, it, it was brand new. So uh, not too many people had ever seen it, and they're like getting freaked out because this thing is <laughs> saying things that how does this thing know that about me? <laughs> so you can have some fun with this remote. Uh, let's see. Okay, in, in the uh, Amazon app for the Echo, there's a lot of things you can do with the Echo. And, and those of you who have one, I don't know if you're aware of many of the things that you, you can do. Uh, lists and notes. And I, I, I know I've done this, but you're going to go to a store and you make a list and then you rush out and you get, oh, I left it on the counter. Well, if you use this, you just tell Alexa, add eggs to my shopping list. Um, you know, add, fix the screen to my to-do list, so you have multiple lists even. And then you get to the grocery store, and you just look on your phone, at your Amazon app, and you can see all the stuff you've told it to add to your shopping list. And you can get that, so you don't have to write it down and you just, while you're, while you're, like, it's kitchen items, while you're working in the kitchen, oh yeah, I just use the last eggs. Uh, uh, Alexa, add eggs to my shopping list. You know, while your hands are all dirty, you don't have to write anything down, you just tell it. And it's there. Uh, calendar. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. I've, I've, I've brought in my Google Calendar to here. Ziggy, what's on my calendar for today? Today. There are three events remaining. There is one event in progress. Computer plug in lasts until 10.45 a.m. Then, at 10.45 a.m., there's computer lab. And at 6 p.m., there's hardly connect ticket. So, I can go on my phone, on my Google Calendar, and put my events on there. I can ask this. And it's not just today. I can ask it what, what I'm doing tomorrow, on the April 1st. Um, any day, and they'll tell me. Uh, let's see. Routines. Now, I've got 
routines set up so that I have to think that some of these are in, in my Alexa and some are in my uh, other automation system. So I won't get confused. But there are some things you can do. Uh, I'm trying to think now which ones are. <laughs> um, you can set up routines so that if you know if, if it's dusk, you, 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 you uh, turn on certain lights. Uh, and and um, oh, the one of them that I that I set up, I can just say Alexa, Merry Christmas, and it will turn on the main Christmas tree, it'll turn on the little tree in the foyer, it'll turn on all the outside lights, and then the echo will start playing Christmas music. <laughs> just by me saying Merry Christmas to it. So that's 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 a routine that I need to set up. Um, follow updates I've never looked at, but it's something you can tell it what things you're interested in, it'll follow those things. Uh, blueprints, uh, Alexa. Alexa together, if you have someone that you want to, that they have an, an Echo device, you can kind of connect with them and uh, monitor how they're doing, talk to them. You can you monitor your workouts and tie your workouts, I don't find that very useful. Uh, reminders, you can tell it uh, to remind you uh, of Siggy, remind me of my presentation in five seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe five seconds is too short. Um, because by the time I, I, I finished thinking about it, uh, five seconds had gone. But there's so many things you can do with timing like that. Alarms and timers. Uh, I've, I've got my wife for and she can do multiple timers. You know, Alexa, set an oven timer for 20 minutes. Uh, and Alexa, set an egg timer for three minutes. And then they're both running, and you can do multiple timers. Uh, and then don't go and tell you the egg timer uh, is done, or whatever it says, but something to that effect. And then the other one keeps running, and then the oven timer is done. So it's it's handy for little things like that instead of trying to, okay, timer on the oven is set for that, the timer on the microwave is for this. I just do it with, with the uh, echo on that keeps track of all that. Um, oh, um, skills and games. I don't play games. Um, I'm not sure what, what's all that. Oh, you can, you can do some, some cutesy things like um, Ziggy, tell me a joke. Why isn't his dad a baseball? Three strikes and you're out. They're corny, but. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Um, I was just thinking, not really a question, but I'm wondering um, with um, the timers and reminders, uh, could it be helpful to put it on one and a memory box or something or some. Because if you think you Yeah, well, that's that's one of the things that that uh, works up together can be used for. I, I, the question was, um, would it be useful for someone that has memory loss or, or even some other um, aging problems? Um, and yes, it, it could be because if you were with them and you were going to leave, but you could, you could set a timer to remind them that to take their medicine or something, or that that uh, works up together. Is something else that you can do, even from the app on your phone. If you were after you left, you can connect with the one in the house and make sure that they would take their medication on time. So yeah, there are some uses for that. Um, things to try. There's all kinds of things to try. Automotive. I I, I don't have any uh, Google or, or Android or Apple stuff in my car, so I haven't even looked at that. But, Things to try to tell you all kinds of things that you can do with your phone. I think I've got some of those listed later on in the, in the slideshow. Uh, find my, you can say, uh, tell it to find my phone, and it'll call your phone. Um, I've misplaced my phone a couple times. 
So that, that is helpful. A cooking library, you can, get, you can get your favorite recipes in there and have it. And I haven't tried that, so I don't know if it tells you what it is or if you need one of the display to, to show you the library, uh, the cooking library. Okay, what can I automate in my home? Lights, I haven't seen anybody talk about that. Wall outlets, you can, you can replace some of your wall outlets with Wi Fi wall, <laughs> wall outlets, or there's other methods other than Wi Fi. There's something called Zigbee and Z Wave. Um, I think some of them are even, might be Bluetooth, I'm not sure about that. But a lot of, one, a lot of the ones you feel find at Walmart and that are usually uh, Wi Fi. So it's, but if you're not comfortable with electricity, you should get somebody to do that. That's my, you can't read them each on the bottom, but um, wall switches and outlets. If you're comfortable, if you know what you're doing with electricity, and you can replace a light switch, then you would probably be okay doing this, but don't attempt it if, if you're just reading the instructions trying to figure out what to do. Um, but instead of, instead of having a plug-in like this, you can actually change the wall switch so you don't have this sticking out and you just plug into it. Oh, one thing I didn't mention about, about those is there are some different ones. I've got quite a few of these brown ones, but the problem with these is when you plug one into a duplex outlet, it covers up enough where you can't plug two of them. To, to one outlet. Now you probably could get a regular power cord in there, but not another one of these. But now this is a standard duplex outlet that I got here. And these are made so that you can plug two in one outlet. So if, if that's something you want to do, then you probably want to get, make sure you get the ones that are rectangular like this that will fit two into one outlet. Uh, Door locks. So far, I'm not big on door locks. I don't know. With all the hacking and stuff that goes on, I don't, I don't know if I want someone to be able to hack into my door lock in my house. So I haven't done anything with that yet. Uh, but water leak sensors, those are easy. Those are usually wireless. It's just a little device you set on the, on the floor by your water heater, by your washing machine, under your kitchen sink maybe. And that connects to uh, now, some of them would require a hub, which uh, I don't know how much. Well, there are there are systems that you know, the regular Wi-Fi ones are kind of standalone where you just put the devices around. Um, some of them are require a hub, like some of the things I have at home. They use the Zigbee communication where there's a hub in the middle of the house, and all the devices in the house connect to that Zigbee. And then the Zigbee connects to my home automation system. The advantage to that is you're not using up a lot of your Wi Fi all the time. It's on Zigbee, and then this is just talking to your automation system uh, via Wi Fi. So, uh, water leak sensors, some of them will require a hub, and that's getting it the next step into automation. <laughs> and there's a hub for that. Um, video doorbells, a lot of people have ring doorbells. <laughs> Those, those are great, and they can easily be integrated into um, the automation system that I'm using and other automation systems. Uh, presence and motion detection, uh, those I have around the house. You, you walk in, into a room, the lights come on, so you don't have to push buttons. Um, the, the problem with that sometimes is some of the motion detection things. Uh, they need a lot of motion to detect. Um, I did it years ago with the, my kids would always leave, always leave the lights on in the, in the family room and go to their rooms and, and sign up, yeah, I'll fix them. I put a motion sensor there and put them on the automation system. And so they walk in the room, lights come on, and when they left, they go to the room. Five minutes later, the lights would go off. I was home alone one night and went down, nice and quiet in the house. I sat down, I was reading. And a few minutes later, lights went off. Mm. 
<laughs> lights came out again. So maybe the lights go out tomorrow. Damn it, two minutes. I don't pay my hours. So and there's there's some detectors now that have presence and motion detection. So they have like a like a low low power radar like that can detect even as much as you're breathing. As long as you're not 30 feet away. But so some of them are very sophisticated and not outrageous in price either. Security cameras, a lot of people have security cameras. There's some really inexpensive. This one is from a company called Wise, W-Y-Z-E. I think they're like $30. They plug in USB, well, USB power supply, and then they connect uh, Wi-Fi to your, to your system. Then you have another app for this. So, but I, 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 used, I used one of these to, remember when we used to have the, the train set up out in the, in the lobby over there? When I set this up, to do time lapse, and I recorded the whole eight hour day that they're working and compressed it to six minutes. And all, all these old guys are just. <laughs> it was, I, I showed it at one of our meetings here a few years ago, but it, it, was, it was pretty fun. So, a lot of capabilities built into some of these inexpensive devices. But again, security cameras, sometimes you want to put those up high someplace on the outside. You may need to get some help for that. And a lot of them will require running power to it. Now some of them, like you know, Blink, my daughter and son law use Blink at their lake house. And that's a battery operating, they change the batteries like every six months. So that, that's not too bad. Uh, automatic blinds, that's one of the things on my list of things to do. Uh, heating and cooling, I, a lot of people probably have. A nest or some other Wi-Fi thermostat. Uh, uh, some automations will do furnace humidifier control. I've got a humidifier in my furnace, and when it gets cold out, I have to go around the basement and turn the humidity down. Then when it gets warm, we have to turn the humidity up, and it's just that's annoying. So one of my little computers like that, I want to program so that, that I can I can measure the humidity with a little sensor like this. This this measures. Temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. Uh, and you can just stick it on the wall, stick it on, display it on, it on the counter. Uh, really handy. So then my little program will automatically turn the, the uh, humidifier on and off when it needs it. Uh, shower humidity control. A lot of times I'll forget, or someone else will forget to turn on the exhaust fan when you're taking a shower and get rid of the humidity in there. Uh, you can have one of these sensors in the bathroom, and then put a uh, controlled switch on, on the exhaust fan, and then it'll automatically turn on the exhaust fan when you need it. I don't think I've ever seen one with sense odor though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the mailbox alert text message I mentioned, dining room blinds, this one drives me nuts. Like every morning you go open, 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 every evening, close, close, close. Um, that's, that's annoying to me. So I, I, I do want to automate those. And I, I, I got it all up here with sensors by the window, a, a light sensor and a temperature sensor. So that if it's bright sun, well, yeah, sure, open the, open the blinds. But if it's maybe not so bright and it's cold in there, then you want to keep the blinds closed. And so the program doesn't allow, allow for that. So just a lot of things that you can do with technology. <clears throat> uh, things to do on Amazon Echo, what is the weather? And a lot of people that have it tell me to do that. Tell me a joke, I just don't do that. Prank me, uh, that's, that can be funny. Um, change the wake word, like I have, I, I changed this one to Ziggy. Oops, it hurt me. <laughs> um, but you can, you can change it only, only a few. I, I saw something where you can maybe change it to some of your own, but um, you can change it to uh, Amazon, computer, Ziggy. Uh, and Alexa, I, I don't know if there's any others. I think there was one more. Uh, 
Uh, you can change the voice. You can tell it to change the voice to a different a, uh, English uh, accent voice, a uh, male voice, female voice, uh, Australian, Canadian. Uh, what's the temperature? Well, I've got these sensors. I've got one in the garage, one in the basement, one in the dining room. Now I can ask it, okay, what's the temperature in the garage? I keep water out in the garage and stuff, so I'd, I'd like to know if it's getting cold out there. So uh, I, can, I can easily find out. Or I can set up an automation that would tell me if it's getting too cold out there. And the other, and Alexa, that would tell me. I've got, I've got my, my wife would always forget to charge her cell phone when I try to call her and she's out and write a voicemail. So I, um, I set up an automation. I can monitor, I can look on my phone and see what the charge level is on her phone. So <laughs> the automation system, well, if the char her charge level drops below 30%, I'll get a message on my phone. She gets a message on her, on her phone, she won't look at it. And, 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 and if she's home, Alexa will tell her, Karen, charge your phone. So, and then, and then when she does plug it in, it'll tell her, Karen, your phone is at 100%, so she got to plug it. Um, uh, find your phone. Turn on length for 10 minutes. And that's that's a nice feature. You can go into the kitchen for, for just a, a few minutes rather than have thought to turn the light on, turn the light off. You say, turn the light on for five minutes. And it'll come on. Five minutes later, boom, oh, goes off. Um, you can set reminders. Um, and, and, and they've made it real easy. Siggy, set a reminder. What's the reminder for? Nothing. Oh. I guess I didn't like that. <laughs> but usually it'll ask you, okay, what time? And, or you, you can tell it to add an event to my calendar. And it will add an event to your calendar. Uh, let's see, set up and turn. I talked about that. Uh, set, it, set, it, set alarm. Uh, yeah, we use that often. Uh, my wife does that. Like she set it for 7 o'clock this morning for me to wake her up, and then she. I woke her up and she did it out of bed anyway. Um, you can tell open fireplace, sleep sounds. Sounds, sounds? No, no. Um, so you can have make the sound, rain sounds and then help you go to sleep or something. You can do that and you have to turn that up for like 10 minutes. I told you about my Merry Christmas routine. If you have a fire TV, you can use your voice to access the content on your TV. Uh, Geofence, if you've ever heard that term, put that blue circle around my house. That's if if I'm coming home late after all the lights have gone off in the evening, and I get within that blue circle and that geofence, it'll turn on lights in the house. So the sense that my phone is getting close to the house, it'll turn on the lights. Now if I don't have my phone with me, that's not gonna work. But that's kind of nice. Uh, okay, home assistant. Let's see where we're going to go along here. Uh, I'm talking about when, when the SDN servers are shut down. And, uh, home assistant is open source free software that is community supported with over a thousand integrations. Integrations are like my 100 volt thermostat. I just tell them, okay, add in this integration, and now it knows how to talk to my 100 volt thermostat. And I can bring up uh, different things to look at information about that high level thermostat. Um, one goal of the community is to eliminate the dependency on vendors external servers and operate completely on mobile hardware, which then you don't have to worry about them shutting down their servers and you being stuck with something that doesn't work. If everything is work working locally, you don't care. As long as you've got an internet connection, and you don't really need an internet connection if unless you're going to be accessing your stuff remotely. Then you need the internet connection, but otherwise, you can just exist all in your house without an internet connection. If you're just going to operate, everything will operate in, inside your house. Um, and let's see, well, if I'm, and operate completely on local hardware, well, except for remote access. Yeah, after all, Google, Amazon, Apple, and China already know way too much about us. I'll give them more information because some of these, a lot of these devices are made in China. 
and the app is from China. So I don't know if their servers are in China, but well, everybody's harvesting information. Um, you, know what they, you know what they say, if, 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 if you're using something that's free, you're the product. <laughs> uh, home system is constantly being improved. Home system releases updates and improvements every month. Um, they're improving. They're just going to internal voice control, so you don't even need to use Alexa or Google Home or Siri. You'll be able to do that all by talking to. Uh, and I'm not sure. I haven't researched this yet to see what they're what they're doing, but uh, what they're using for a microphone. Uh, so you can check the status of your device and tell, how, tell you how many lights are on. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, it's not to the level of Alexa yet, but it's always improving. Uh, this furthers HCA's effort to eliminate dependency on our own servers. Mm. HCA will never be able to answer everything that those devices can, but at least HCA won't be dependent on them, those outside servers. Uh, now there's something new coming out called Matter. And I think I've got a slide on that. Uh, I'm trying to get through this because we're running long. Uh, Home Assistant has a USB plug-in device that, you, that I have that, that plugged in that will work with this new system called Matter. That supposedly it's, it's all these, these vendors of all this equipment have gotten together. Uh, Samsung, SmartThings, and, and Apple, and Google, and Amazon, and a lot of other companies that they call it. Tuya is a Chinese company that makes most of this stuff. Uh, they've all gotten together and settled on a common communication so that all these devices, you should be able to just go and buy it, and it'll work without all these separate little apps. So that's the goal, and Matter just came out, uh, I think, last, last, the end of last year. Now, I talked about the integration with my uh, thermostat. A lot of stuff is logged in this automation system. I can look at this, and I can see, and this is just for March 6th, March 7th, uh, I can see in about 5 a.m. the furnace came on, the heat was up, and went up, and up, and about 5, 5, 35, 45, it was up at 72 degrees, which was the set point. This is the set point. And you can see during the day how often it ran. In the afternoon, the, the furnace didn't run at all. And then, then it started running a little bit more, a little bit more, and then running more in the evening. And then at night, the set point went. The set point went down, and then gradually the temperature in the house went down. And then it got down, and then it came right back up again the next morning. So you can log all this. You can go back and look at this historically. <coughs> it's, it's very, uh, I find it very interesting and useful. Because I can see, well, maybe I can set the set, setback lower or higher, and hopefully adjust things like that. And you can do this for a lot of different devices, even these power monitoring devices. Uh, Matter is a new global open source standard that aims to simplify the smart home ecosystem by allowing internet connected devices. Like I said, all these different manufacturers got together. They all cooperate, they all cooperate manufacturing devices to work together. And the version 1.0 was released in October. Uh, so currently we have Wi Fi, ZigBee, Z Wave, and other communication networks which don't communicate with each other negatively. Matter changes that so that you communicate out of the box. Concerns and dangers. What if the Wi Fi or internet goes down? Well, your automations will stop working if, if your Wi Fi goes down. Or in some cases where they're connecting to an external server, like with my Instagram, the, um, the servers are gone, the devices stop working. Oh, and there's a second one. Um, but you can still always push buttons, pull switches, you know, pull cords, and it'll work. Um, is there security built into these devices? That's, that's an issue that everybody just kind of just, uh, just kind of ignores. Yeah, these, these devices are cheap, but how secure are they? Probably not real, real tight security. So, there have been cases where if somebody were to hack into this, then they're into your network and they can maybe get into other places within your network. 
That's what happened with uh, LastPass. Somebody hacked into a media server program and planted some software and was able to get in to eventually steal LastPass's password database. So, yeah, so that's one of the concerns. Uh, well, yeah, a lot of devices now. I think with most of the Pulte homes, the NEC standard, the National Electrical Code, uh, was changed so that that required there be a third wire, a neutral wire, in every box in the house, which is great for home automation because a lot of these devices require a neutral wire. Now, I've installed some in, in uh, the web homes, and they did not have a neutral wire in every box. So in one case, I, I thought, okay, now I'm going to change your electrical system so you don't get a handyman and he ran up with a neutral wire from another box to the wall and into that box so we could install uh, a wall switch to control them. But so if you have a white wire, it's usually white uh, in the box, then most of these devices you put in the wall, the wall switches, they won't work. And some smart thermostats require a fifth wire, which wasn't wired up in mine, but the wires were there and I was able to use them connected. I connected it inside my furnace and then connected to the thermostat. If you have batteries in your in your thermostat now, you don't need you know you need four wires. If you don't have batteries, you're probably using at least five wires. Um, so if you're gonna buy a um, smart thermostat, you might have to Think about this. Sources of more information. This rack a little bit differently. Uh, YouTube channels. I do a lot of time. I spend a lot of time on YouTube. Uh, everything smart home. These are these are channels. On there. If you're familiar with channels on YouTube, you go to YouTube and just go to YouTube search and just type in like everything smart home. And you'll get all these. You'll find this channel for this the, the guy who does that and some very knowledgeable people. Um, Oh, the, the hookup, that thing talks so fast. But there's a way in YouTube you can go down to the settings and you can talk to do it at, at half speed or something and it slows them down. <laughs> so you can you can listen to them slower. Talk slower. But all, all of those are, are really good. And they get into a lot of things, uh, automating on uh, Christmas lightning, all these the, the fancy stuff you see all the different designs and things. Uh, some of these guys are into that. Some are very entertaining. But that's <coughs> and we get to the end. Um, Amazon, they've been advertising this not heavily. Amazon Astro. It's a little robot. And it's really cool. And I, I, I wanted to get one, but what am I gonna do with it? <laughs> it's just be fun to have. But it, it does, I mean it's got this telescoping camera that that thing you can, you can, it'll go around your house and it'll map out your house so it knows where everything is. And you can block it off so it doesn't map out and it won't go down your stairway or something. Because it wouldn't, that wouldn't turn out well. Um, but it's, it's cute. And the display kind of goes back and forth and the eyes blink. And uh, it's, I think it's really cool. It was $1,000. And you had, to, you had to apply to be invited. And I thought about it, and I, I, I didn't. Well, now it's, you still have to apply to be invited, but it's $1,600. So, and that, that's the price that they said it was going to be after, uh, after the ride. But it's, it's cute. I don't know. Anyway, that's longer than I should have, but hopefully you got something out of this. Anybody, anybody have any questions? No questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first question, Ken. Oh. If you ever want to sell your house, do all the toys go with it? <laughs> um, probably. I'd mean, I, I, I start rolling all new stuff. Um, the, thing, the thing that concerns me is if something happens to me, what's my wife going to do? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to sell the house. <laughs> <laughs> A question from the technically deficient zone. Yeah. Do you have any comment about the home app for iPhones? The home app? 
home is for home automation. Oh, home, yeah. Uh, anyway, if, if you have an iPhone, there's an app called Home, H-O-M-E, and there are instructions in it that tells you how to do a lot of the stuff Ken has been talking about to automate your home. That's well, Apple, Apple has their own ecosystem. It's called Apple HomeKit. Correct. And I, I'm assuming that it works uh, with, with the Apple um, HomeKit system. Right. That would be the app for that. Um, so that would be similar to the Alexa Correct. app. So I, 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 don't, I, I do have an iPad, but that's all. <laughs> Other questions? Thank you all for coming. We'll see you next month. Thank you, Ken. Thank you.